So let's talk about linear regression. Very simple. Now, what do we mean by linear regression? Linear regression is used to test for, is used to know the relationship between variables, between a, a dependent variable uh, and one or more independent variables. So we used to know the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. So we have different type of regression. We're, we're going to talk about maybe simple and multiple regression here. Yeah? The OLS regression, ordinary least square regression. Now, ordinary least square regression, both the simple and multiple ordinary least square regression. Now we have principal component regression, we have rich regression, we have partial least square regression. So we are not talking about all that. We have logistic regression, we're not talking about all that. Like I told, we have many methods in statistics, which I'm not here to teach. I've told you how to get it. If you want to get any method in statistics, let's say I want to get rich or oh, let me say I want to get partial least square regression. I will just type partial. All of them, since you know the basics in Aru, you can get any method, partial least square regression in Aru. So this is what you do, you search and get the code. You can open this tab. Just look for any tab and you open. I can open this tab, this is 24 pages, let me avoid that. I can open this tab. I used to tell you, you need library math, you need library carrots, you need library applied predictive modeling, you need library last, you need library PLS, you need library elastic and suitability, Look at the code. I'm using the code. Very simple. You have to set your seed. Remember, this 2167 is not composite. You can use any number. So now I've taught you all the basics. You should be able to know what is here. So this is just the this is time to tell them I'm doing a partial least square regression. This thing, your dependent variable. When you see dot, dot means in the data set, every other thing, every, any other variable that is there, use it as the independent variable. Any other thing, I will explain this when I want to talk about this OLS regression I want to teach now. I will explain this dot when I want to talk about OLS regression I'm teaching now. So, but let me, dot means any other variable in that data. The data set is training. Any other variable, use it as the independent variables. Then you specify your data. Now this validation is specific to partial PLS arrow. Now you can also use your app. Once you've called up that library, you can use your question mark. When you use question mark, you can now type PLSR. It will explain everything about PLSR. Then it's how to predict with the model. So that's it. You see your result. To also teach you how to interpret it, you read, read all these things and learn how to interpret. What I normally do, if I want to learn a new method, I can open this, read up to three different articles on it. So I can read this also. So this is another article on it. So you can read it. So you go open more articles and see the code and use. So I'm not here to teach all the because we have million methods in statistics, but you can get any code. Like what I put is always always one or two lines. Most of the lines are normal. Look at this. Now this is just to get root mean square. Root mean square. This plot which I've taught. Now this may be specific to partial LSR. If you see all the code, they're just one, one line. I've taught you this after plotting. I've taught you you can set color, you can set your CX, you can set your PCH. I've taught all this. I've taught what X lab means. I've taught what main means, the type two. I've, then is the what you, the data you want to plot. So I've taught all these things. So all the, you see all these things, they're just one line, one line. So I believe I've taught all the major things. So let's return back to it. So we're talking about ordinary least square regression. Ordinary least square regression. Now, how do you do ordinary least square regression? I've, thought, I've mentioned earlier that he's talking about relationship. Now, let me explain what you mean. Now, someone, a man met me. This is a life work he was working on. He met me, said he has there is a particular... How do they call this one? Okay, he said is if he has been going to the farm. Okay, let me know if that example. 
Okay, let me, okay, say has been going to the farm. There's a particular, uh, okay, let me use, he also told me about on that one that, he, wait, wait, I'm trying to remember what he told me. Let me pause this recording for a while. Okay, I just remembered what I was. So he told me there is a fertilizer that he is using on his farmland. So he wants to know if there is any relationship between the quantity of fertilizer he will apply. So if there's any relationship between the quantity of fertilizer and the size of his yam tuba, the size of the yam tuba is going to harvest. He said that's what he wants to study. Is there any relationship between both of them? So that if he knows that there's a relationship, so he, he will know a, a way to influence the size of his yam. So that means if he wants a small yam, he will know the amount of fertilizer that they use. If he wants a, a, a bigger yam during the harvest season, he will know the size of fertilizer to use. So that's what he was trying to study. So he, that, so he gave me data for that. So I used the data to do a linear regression. Now with the linear regression, you can know study the relationship. Now OLS has an inbuilt mechanism to test the goodness of fit of your model, the model you're trying to use to study the relationship. Now I say we have independent and we have dependent variables. Now we are trying to use the independent variables to predict the dependent variable. So in this example I just gave, the independent variable is the size of fertilizer, because we are trying to use the size of fertilizer to predict the size of the yam tuba. So this size, the quantity of fertilizer, quantity of fertilizer here is the what? Independent variable. Why the size of the yam tuba is the word dependent variable. So the yam tuba depends on the quantity of fertilizer. Another example I can give to you is a student. We can say the number of hours a student spends reading can determine the student score in an exam. So if the student spends more hours to read, the student will score more. If the student doesn't spend, more, if the student doesn't spend more hours, the student cannot score more. So now in this case, I'm studying relationship between what students score and number of hours they spend reading. Now, look at, looking at this example, the two examples I've given so far, we call them simple linear regression. Simple because why we have only one independent variable, one dependent variable. Now when we have more than one independent variable, more than one, we call that what? Multiple linear regression. So that means we are trying to use two factors to predict one. So I can decide to use size of fertilizer and also the uh, is again? size of fertilizer and the all that I use. I can say okay. The years of experience of the farmer. So I can say okay. So the size of the tuber you produce depends on the quantity of fertilizer and the years of experience of the farmer. So if the farmer is a learner, just starting, doesn't have a, a good number of years of experience, it also affects the quantity of fertilizer. So in that case, we're still talking about what? Regression, but we're talking about multiple regression because we have two independent, two independent variables. Now, how do we write the code? Let's go straight. I've done that before. So let me, we are going to use this data. This data. So this, this, I, I'm going to delete block. Because we don't need block now. I'm going to delete it. I'm also going to delete it from here. And I'll call this box two. I can call this my yam tuba. Yam, that means the size of yam. So let me call it yam. So I can call the second one fertilizer. Then I'll call the third one experience. Yam fertilizer. Experience. I 
correct. So let me set C. Because if I don't set C, I can't replicate my result. Let me use set C3. I think that's what we use before and got data there, set C3. Let me set C. So this is my data. So if I want to see my data, I can type box two, or I start with a bracket and end with a bracket. Box two, no box, box two. Correct. So this is so I want to do a regression. I want remember the example I gave that the years of experience of the farmer, the quantity of fertilizer will determine the size of the yam produced. So uh, so let me call it model two. So you write your model. When you want to do a linear regression, you, you, the function is LM. LM. LM there means linear model. Then you start by writing your dependent variable. The dependent variable here is yam. That's the variable you are trying to predict size of yam. Then you put your symbol. This symbol means I'm done with writing the dependent variable. So what anything I want to write henceforth is the independent variable. Now remember, we have how many variables? Yeah, we have three variables. The remaining two variables, I want to use it for independent. So because I want to use the remaining variable in my data set, I can just put dot. That dot means any other data you see there, use it as independent variable. Then you specify your data. My data is box two. Now, let me run this. Then next, if you want to see your results, like we'll be doing use summary, summary of your model, summary of model two, summary of your model, whenever you write your model. Bob Spoon, okay, sorry, this is not, for, I didn't spell it well. LB. So this is, look at this. I seen, I didn't spell fertilizer and experience. I just wrote dot. But the dot means any other thing in that data set that is not YAM, use it as the independent variable. So that's the meaning of this dot. Now you can decide to write it yourself. I want to write it myself. I can spell fertilizer. Then if you want to write the second one, you use plus, take note plus and experience. When you use times, you are talking about you want to you are talking about the interaction. Look at this. If I use times, actually, I'm talking about the interaction. See, are you seeing it? I will talk about I'm trying to use three variables: fertilizer, experience, and combination effect of fertilizer and experience. So we are talking about plus now. Instead of you writing all this, you can use dot. Dot means any other. Now the reason why you have to use plus sometimes. You may have a data set that have other variables. So because it has other variables, you may not want to use all, maybe all the variables for your regression analysis. So if you use dot, dot means use everything, except the dependent variable that you stated already, use everything. So which it does not what you want. So you can use plus to select the exact ones you want. So I've done that. So first you also have to test for your assumption. So you test for homogeneity of variance assumption, which is our what, living test. Remember living test is in the library. Is in the library cars, library cars. So the event test of what? You write your dependent variable, our dependent variable here is what? Just, or we can just copy this. But the event test goes with times, it goes with asterisk, not plus. So I have to change it to, so you test for, Wait, 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 wait. Okay, 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 okay. Let me see. So let's start with normality plot. So for we to test for normality plot, we can do plot. The model, model is what? Model two comma two. So this is the normality plot, which most of the points are on the diagonal line. So it follows the normal distribution. I also use the, let me use the graphical method now to test for constant variance. The graphical method here yeah, we use is plot one. So this is it. This is a graphical method. It's still used to test for homogeneity of variance. I'm not going to use the event test. I'm going to use another method for that. So the code I'm using now is the plot graphical method. I'm using graphical method to test for homogeneity of variance. So when you plot one, 
is for homogeneity of variance test plus two is for normality test. Now normality test, we can decide to use the Shapiro week also. To use this Shapiro week, let me call it error one. We we'll have to extract the errors. We we'll have to extract the errors from the model. So we'll call residual, residual, then you put your model, which is what? Let me call it object. Object, then you put your model, model, which is model two. After getting your residual, you can now do your Shapiro week. Shapiro week test of the error one. So the p value is also greater than 0 0.05, and is a confirmation to the graphical method. So this graphical method, look at most of the point on the diagonal line. And also this is confirmed using a Shapiro week test. You must not use the two, the graphical and the Shapiro week test to make when you want to interpret your normality test. You can use either of them, or you can also choose to use both of them. Then for the constant variance for regression, what I'm teaching you. I'm going to use the graphical method. Now, let me explain how we can interpret the graphical method. When you want to use the graphical method, you plot your residual against fitted. Residual against fitted. Now, this is how to interpret this. If there is a pattern in this, this point, if they have a pattern, if they have a pattern, then you can say there is no constant variance if it has a pattern. Let me show you what I mean by pattern. If your data is going this way, your data is going this way. Follow my cursor. If it's going this way, there is a pattern, an upward trend. If it's going this way, there's another pattern, a downward trend. If it is going this way, there is a U-shaped trend. If it is going this way, a circle trend, a circle, not trend, a circle. So if there's a pattern, we say it has it doesn't have constant variance as if there is a pattern. If there is no pattern, we can now say there is constant variance. Another thing we can test for is multicollinearity assumption. Multicollinearity assumption. Now, to test for multicollinearity, we have different methods. We have the VIS, variance inflation factor, we have the correlation coefficient. So we can also test for so I mentioned three now. We can also test for Dobbin Watson, that is autocorrelation, that is four assumptions. For linear regression, I've mentioned four now. I've mentioned normality, which I've done. I've mentioned constant variance, which I've, I've also done. For normality, I use the normal probability plot and shall prove weak test for. Constant variance are used for constant variance. I use uh, the uh, plot, the graphical method to make to calculate for constant. Variance. So let's test for multicollinearity. Now, what's multicollinearity assumption? For multicollinearity assumption, we are trying to the okay, multicollinearity assumption means that the independent variables are not correlated, are not highly correlated. Now, why is it a problem? Now, if the independent variables you are using to study the dependent variable, they are all saying the same thing. Why should you use both of them? When they are correlated, it means they all they say similar things. When they are highly correlated, it means they say similar things. So we don't want that. We are trying to look for different variables that are not saying the same thing that we can use to predict the dependent variable. So we don't want them to have a strong correlation between themselves, that would be independent variables. So whenever they are saying the same thing, is a challenge. How do you solve the challenge? One of the methods that you can use to solve it is to drop one of them by saying the same thing. So you can drop one of the variables, one of the independent variables, and continue with your analysis. Or you look for other way to solve the problem of multicollinearity. Like I told you, whenever your data fail any of the assumptions, you cannot continue. So let's test for a multicollinearity assumption. So we need a package for that. So we're going to install the package for that. We're going to install the package for that. So I just had to browse about the VIF using arrow, like I taught you guys. So the package we're going to install is 
reg class reg class so we'll go to package then we install reg class then we'll call it up after installing live let me install it i don't think i've used I've not done arrow. I've not done regression with arrow. So what I normally use to do regression is SPSS and a mini tab. So I use when I want. I use arrow to do maybe advanced analysis. I've not used arrow for regression because SPSS and mini tab they are point and click software. You don't need to write code for them. So you just point. You just point and click. And SPSS and mini tab will give you the result. So let me call my library I'm installing. Lib okay, so I read class, so I can call it up. So let me, I'm testing for VIF. So I can now type my GIF. So we have different type. Okay, GIF. First, we have GIF in car, car library. I put this one up already. We also have GIF in what red class. So let's see what car is. It's also used for variance inflation factor. Okay, so we can use any of them. So you can use the GIF from cars library, from car library, or the GIF from red class. So both of them will work. So what do you put here? You put your model. What's the name of our model? Our model is model two. So you can run. So this is your VIF. Let me check if the other one will give us the same answer. The VIF from red class. Model two. Now, already well, they are the same thing. So that means I don't really need, so look at the two packages. One is already, it has been called up already, car. That means I, I won't have installed this red class. Now, remember I told you, people are writing, the ones writing the, people are the ones writing these codes. So you can write your own code for correlation and save it, convert it to a library so people can install it. So the first person wrote VIF, used lowercase letter to call it. Another person decided to write his own code, used uppercase, and you see both of them are giving us the same result. So you can use anyone you want. So what do, I, do we use? VIF is another assumption, another assumption. We call it multi collinearity assumption. We use it to test for multi collinearity assumption. Multi collinearity assumption says that the independent variables, when we say there is no multi collinearity, it means the independent variables are not correlated. We say there is multi collinearity when the independent variables are highly correlated. So I've tested for three assumptions now, three assumptions now. So we are going to stop. We can also test for outlier if outlier. I can test for outlier of the data. The first data is fertilizer. So I'm using the box plot to test for outlier. There is no outlier box plot. So let me test outlier for the second one. Experience. There is no outlier box plot for the third one, which is what yeah. There is no outlier. So I've tested for four assumptions now. Now we use box plot to test for outlier. What was an outlier? I've explained outlier before when I was teaching data visualization. Outlier means extreme values, extreme values. So when we have extreme values, you cannot continue with the analysis. You have to look for a way to solve that problem. Now we have different methods we can use to test for outlier. One of the methods is box plot. We have Grip test. We have the uh, other uh, forgotten the name. So we have different methods to test for outlier. So I prefer most times I use the box plot. Okay, we have the Malanobis distance. We have the name as from. So we have Malanobis distance also used to test for outliers. As we have the grip test. We have the box plot. Now let me show you. Look, how will I know if there's an outlier? That's a good question. If you want to ask, now let me create a variable and show you how to know if there's a, if there's an outlier. So let me create a variable one. So 
two, three, one, two, hundred. Looking at this, hundred is an outlier. Hundred is an outlier. So let's see if my box plot to tell me is an outlier. So box plot of ASA. I think now you see a point, you a point or points that are outside. Can we compare both? Now, assuming there is a point outside this line, this line, this upper bound or the lower bound, there is a point. Then you say there is an outlier, something like this. Okay, let me use thirty. I see now because of this. So let me put another number minus ten. Now we have two outliers. That's what we're trying to tell us. We have outlier. This is an outlier, and this is also what an outlier. So whenever there is there are points outside the upper and the lower uh, bound, we we'll call them what outliers. So when you have a data that has an outlier or uh, or that that have outliers, you can no longer continue the analysis. You have to look for a way to solve that problem of outliers. So I've tested for how many assumptions now? Four assumptions. Uh, the assignment I'm going to give to you now is to test for. The last one, what is the last one? Auto correlation assumption, auto correlation assumption. So just go online. So that our act, just go, you type auto correlation. So that will be your assignment. Auto correlation test in R. It's just a line. W, W, what's in test? Just a line, just a line. You can just open it, but I want you to do it yourself. So I'm not going to do it. Now, let me explain it. What do we use Dobin Watson test? We use Dobin Watson test to test for autocorrelation. What is autocorrelation? Now, autocorrelation is saying that the, there is a serial correlation between the error term. Now, we don't want the error term to be serially correlated. We don't want the error term to be serially correlated. Now, whenever this error term the error terms are serially correlated. The results you will get from your from your analysis will not be accurate. And any interpretation from that analysis will not also be accurate. I've mentioned five assumptions, five assumptions. Normality test using Shapiro weak test or the normal QQ plot. Constant variance using the normal, the Kafka method test for it. There should, there should not be any systematic pattern. Outlier, we use box plot. Multicollinearity, the independent variables must not be highly correlated. We use BIS, variance inflation factor. The last one, which is what autocorrelation, the errors must not be they must not be serially correlated. And so we are going to use the Watson, which is your assignment. You learn it. I've shown you how to get it. So just click any of this and get it yourself. So first, your data must satisfy all the assumptions. So when your data satisfies all the assumptions, you cannot continue with your linear regression analysis interpretation. So I can now copy this, bring it down, <coughs> and interpret. So I will mention its key things that you interpret here. What are the key things you interpret? First, linear regression has an internal mechanism, an internal mechanism to check the goodness of it of the model. Now, what is this internal mechanism? We call it arrow square, arrow square, arrow square. Now this arrow square is supposed to be close to one, close to one. You can multiply this by 100. When you multiply by 100, it should be close to 100. You multiply this by 100, you'll be getting zero, you're getting 1.6. So what is the score of this model that we have here is 1.6 over 100. So it means the model is a very bad model. So it means you cannot use this model. You cannot use fertilizer. Of course, it's saying that you cannot use fertilizer and experience to estimate the size of yam. Remember, the data I'm using, the simulated data, that's why. Assuming I'm using a real-life data, we may not get this. I'm using a simulated data, that's why I take note of that. Well, I'm just showing you how to interpret this. So it means that the goodness of fit of the model is very bad. How do you interpret arrow square? Arrow square tells us the percentage variation of the dependent variable that is explained by your model. The dependent variable here is yam. So remember our focus is predicting, we're trying to estimate to predict yam. So the arrow square here tells us how these independent variables that we have here, 
how many percentage variation of them can they explain? They can only explain 1.6 out of 100%. They can only explain 1.6, that's a very poor score. After interpreting their root square, the next thing you interpret is the goodness of fit of the model, goodness of fit of the model. Now, how do you interpret the goodness of fit of the model? This is what you use. Are you seeing it? You use the p-value p of your F statistic. P-value of your F, look at your F statistics here. Are you seeing it? So the p-value, yeah, we're expecting that the p-value should be less than 0 0.05, our level of significance. Now, what do we use this p-value? We use it to know if the model is if the parameters of all the model is significant. That means we are trying to use it to test if the model is significant. Is the model really significant? Can we use the model? That's what we are using this to test for. Now we expect this to, the null hypothesis is that the model is not significant. Why the alternative hypothesis is that the model is significant. Now, what we want, we want to go with the alternative hypothesis, meaning we want this value to be less than 0.05. That's what we want. We want this value to be less than 0 0.05. So looking at this, both of them are mechanism to test how fit, how good the model is. The Arusco has told us that the model has a poor fitting. The test for the significance of the model has also told us that the model is not significant. The last thing we test for is the significance of each of the variables. Now to test for the significant of fertilizer, we use the p-value. The p-value, yeah, we also expect it to be less than 0.05 or a level of significance. We also test for the significance of experience. Significance of experience. We also expect the p-value to be less than 0.05. Looking at this, the arrow square is low. The model is not significant because of this p-value. And each of the variables too, they are not also what, if the model is not significant, the variables don't expect them to also be significant. So when your variables are not significant, you're not supposed to interpret them. Take note, when your variables are not significant, you're not supposed to what, interpret them. You just state that they are not what, significant and you stop there. But now let's assume, what if they are significant? How do you interpret them? That's where we are going to end for today. What if they are significant? How do you interpret them? What if they are what significant? How do you interpret them? So this is how to interpret them. This is what you interpret. The estimate. The estimate. You interpret your intercept, interpret your fertilizer, and interpret your experience. This is how to interpret it. When I explain it now, and then I will show you a complete work that I did for someone. So this is how to interpret it. Use so the value of yam. That's how to interpret it intercept, the value of your dependent variable, which is yam, the value of your independent variable or the size of your yam or the value of your dependent variable is 70.75 when the fertilizer is zero and the experience is zero. The size of your yam or the value of your dependent variable is 70.75 when your fertilizer is zero and when your experience is zero. Very simple. So what you interpret your intercept by equating your independent variables to zero. And your, the value of your intercept becomes the value of your dependent variable. Now do you interpret fertilizer? You will state, given that the all, all the other variables are held constant, first, that's the condition. The other variables must be held constant. Because the sign here is plus, it's a positive number, there's no minus. Take note. So because it's a positive number, I will, call, I will say there's a positive relationship. So look at what I will say. So, for every unit increase in fertilizer, the yam will increase by 0 0.04. For every unit increase in fertilizer, the size of the yam will increase by 0 0.04. So when I exam, if the, assuming this, the variables are significant, it means that if you add a unit increase in fertilizer, it will make the yam to increase by 0 0.04. Interpreting the year, years of experience is also a positive number. So we say a unit increase, because it's a positive number, that's why I'm using increase. If, if it was a negative, we say decrease. A unit increase in experience will increase the yam by what? 0 0.012. A unit increase in experience 
will increase the yam by what 0.012. Now, assuming fertilizer was minus, was a negative number, how will I interpret it? I will say a unit, assuming it is minus 0.04, take note minus 0.04, I will say a unit increase in fertilizer will decrease, decrease the yam by 0.04. A unit increase in fertilizer will decrease the yam by 0.04. Now, what, what you say this when the value is negative, take note. So that's all. So let me summarize. I say the first thing you interpret after testing for the assumptions, you check the arrow square value, the goodness of fit of the model, also called coefficient of determination. You check for the significance of the model. You check for the significance of each of the variables. Then you start interpreting each of the variables. Now, let me show you a complete work that I did for someone. Then we are going to stop there for today. Regression. Mm. So I told you, I used SPSS for this work. So let me show you this. Then we are going to stop for today. Okay, so this is a complete work I did. So look at this. I just I did a descriptive statistic, the mean the SPSS. See just number plot, a line plot. So I believe everyone can do line plot using arrow. So done this. This is a line plot. This is also a line plot. So this, so look at this ordinarily square regression. The assumptions of these are tested. So I tested for autocorrelation, which I gave you as an assignment using the Watson test. I tested for multicollinearity. I seen this using VIF. I tested for outlier, but I used Malanobis distance. But remember what I taught you guys is box plot. So you interpret using box plot. I tested for normality using normal MPP plot, normal probability plot. For what R is giving us is NQ2 plot, which is also correct. But if you want MPP plot, you can browse. How do I get MPP plot in arrow? So it's almost the same thing. They use it to test for normality also. So this is it. So then I tested for almost elasticity, which I say constant variance, which is this. That there must not be a systematic pattern. Then after that, you now test for the. So look at the, the data satisfy the assumptions of OLS arrow model. So the result of the OLS arrow model are given below. If the data didn't satisfy the assumption, you cannot continue, remember. If it doesn't, then you start looking for other methods that you can use. You can use principal component regression, rich regression, partial least square regression, but you can no longer use ordinary least square regression. Why? Because your data didn't satisfy all the assumptions. Now they have, also you can use what they call the non-parametric test, the jackknife, that's on that method. So all these are methods you can use. But since the data satisfied, I continue using my OLS R. Look at the arrow square value, which you interpret. I seen that that's the first thing I interpreted. So the value is very high, 96.5%. That's a very good score. I also tested for the significance of the model. Look at the p-value, which I showed you. So I'm expecting the p-value to be less than 0 0.05. So look at this. And next thing, test for the significance of each of the variables. So that's what you test next. Then in the last thing, you then interpret it. So this is how you interpret the, uh, look at it, you interpret the uh, constant. This is the constant first. Interpret the each of the variables. So that's how it is. So I think I've done my best to explain I'm not going to explain the multiple linear regression. So we're going to stop here for today. Um, I think tomorrow may be our last class for this training. So we're going to have our last class tomorrow to prepare for it. Thank you. Have a nice day. If you have any questions, please do well to reach out to me. You can always send, chat me up on WhatsApp or send an email to Chukudi dot obite, obite is O B I T E. So chukudi dot obite at uto dot edu dot ng. So you can always reach out to me.
or you send a message to my phone number 070-31-143410. Thank you. I remain blessed.